how to live comfortably on a low income. In a few years, you're going to be making more money than you know what to do with. The good news is that until that day comes, you can still live a very comfortable lifestyle on a low income by following the five steps I'm about to share with you now. First off, what does it mean to live comfortably? This is worth defining as we all have different levels of financial comfort. For example, you may need $100,000 in the bank to feel good about your finances, while others may be happy just to simply be able to meet their bills. In most cases, living comfortably means not being in a situation where you're staying up at night worrying about your finances while making some progress every single month. Now, obviously, when you're making a high income, making progress will be easier. But that's not to say that your presently low income has to hold you back. There are many low income earners that are still seeing their bank accounts grow by the day. Curious how I was able to do this and how you can too? Let's dive in. Step one, tune your money dials. Do you remember when you were younger and used to tune the dial on your car's radio to find the perfect song? Well, in the same way that tuning your radio can put you in a good mood, tuning your money dials can make your financial life way more enjoyable. Before we go over why that's the case, let's first go over what a money dial even is. In the book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich, author Ramit Sethi shares the concept of money dials. These dials represent areas of your finances such as vacations, convenience, entertainment that you prioritise and whichever mean the most to you are those that you should be turning up in order to maximise your money's futility. For instance, maybe you love going on vacations and working towards financial freedom so you're more inclined to spend on trips and investing towards retirement than say going to the mall to buy a new outfit or a video game. Alternatively, you may really enjoy spending money going out for dinners, whereas you might be scared of flying and have zero desire to travel. The point is, the more aware you are of what types of spending make you the happiest, the more accurately you can deploy your money, and this is incredibly important to understand when trying to live the best life possible on a low income. So how do you determine which money dials mean the most to you? Good question. What I recommend is that you review your budget and for each discretionary expense, ask yourself how much value it really brings you. For instance, that $200 charge for drinks at the bar may have been fun at the time, but would have been better spent if it were placed in a vacation fund or used to save for a new laptop. Alternatively, that $200 a month you're spending on Starbucks could have been used to buy tickets to your favorite band. The point is that while you're making a low income, you need to be more conscious about how you spend your money and when you spend on the things that mean the most to you, living comfortably will be a breeze. Step two, set up a budget. A minute ago, I told you to review your budget to determine your money dials. And I have a feeling that some of you got a little hot under the collar because you may not have a working budget in place. No problem, because the one I'm about to share with you is perfect for living comfortably on a low income. The best budget for someone who wants to maximise their use of money while on a low income is the 50-30-20 budget. Let's go over how this budget works and why it's a budget you should strongly consider using. If you're unfamiliar, the 50-30-20 budget involves allocating 50% of your after-tax income to your needs, things like rent, groceries and utilities, 30% towards your wants like going out to eat or new clothes, and 20% towards saving. In order to follow this budget, all you have to do is multiply your after-tax income by these percentages and you'll have the amount of money you can spend monthly on each. Now, why is this the perfect budget for living comfortably on a low income? Because it meets all your needs. First, it literally allows you to meet your needs by allocating part of your income towards your core expenses. Second, it gives you a very generous allocation towards spending on wants items, which if that sounds good to you, then you can let me know by gently tapping the like button below. You see, living comfortably really comes down to having some ability to enjoy your money, despite how much you're earning. I think we can both agree that if you're not able to splurge on a coffee or new outfit from time to time, then you'll simply be living to work instead of working to live, and that's not a lifestyle I'd wish upon anyone. As such, to feel some amount of enjoyment in your life, you need to have some financial flexibility. 
and when 30% of your income can be directed towards your top money dials, you can live a great lifestyle despite your present income. Finally, we have the 20% being allocated towards savings. This amount is key because while we want to enjoy our money, we don't want to be slacking on our financial goals. This is all to say that the 50-30-20 budget allows you to keep the lights on, have some fun money and build up your bank account all at the same time, which is perfect for living comfortably while making it a low income. Step 3. Focus on your big three. If you really want to get ahead, even on a low income, you need to focus on your big three. Chocolate, vanilla and strawberry. Just kidding, this isn't an ice cream commercial. Your big three refers to your three largest expenses, which for most people are their housing, transportation and food. And if you can get these costs dialed in, you can really start to see your level of financial comfort increase over time. Sadly, most people have the wrong impression about their expenses. When most people look at their expenses, they see obstacles. However, when you look at your expenses, especially your big three, you should see opportunities and your big three are chock full of ways to save money. For instance, when it comes to housing, there are tons of ways to save more money. For instance, if you own your own home, you can rent out a room, or if you rent, you can downsize. In fact, moving from a two-bedroom apartment in the average US city to a studio can save upwards of $200 a month. Another example relates to transportation. Switching from driving full-time to taking the bus to work can add back hundreds of dollars to your wallet every single month and reduces the stress that driving can place on you, which I think makes life a bit more comfortable at the same time. Finally, going out to eat less is also an amazing way to cut down your expenses and gain some financial leeway. Sure, it's fun to dine out from time to time, but when you make it a rarer occurrence, all of a sudden it becomes infinitely more valuable while allowing you to keep your monthly expenses within reason. Step four, tackle DEI. If you want to live a comfortable lifestyle on a low income, you need to do two things. Avoid DUIs and tackle your DEIs. You probably know what the former is, but you may not be familiar with the latter. So let's go over what this acronym stands for and why it's critically important in living your best financial life possible. DEI stands for Debts, Emergency Funds and Investments. And if you can get a handle on each of these three areas of your finances, there's no doubting the fact that your financial life will become 10 times better. So let's dive into which to focus on first and how to address each one. Unsurprisingly, the first element you will want to tackle is your debt. If you look at recent studies, the top stressor for 73% of Americans are their finances, and much more of this stress comes from having debt. This makes total sense. Knowing that every month you have to hand over your precious cash to someone else is not only stressful, it's downright annoying, which is why you want to clear up as much debt as you can. Now, as you probably already know, not all forms of debt are created equal. I'm not saying that you need to become mortgage-free overnight, but taking care of higher interest debts like credit card debt or auto loans is a great way to free up cash and live a more comfortable lifestyle, especially because paying creditors probably isn't one of the money dials you prioritise. Now, how do you go about paying off these annoying debts? Simple. When you start using the 50-30-20 budget, allocate your 20% of savings towards debt repayment until your high interest balances are paid off. Then, once they are, you can move on to your next financial priority, which is your emergency fund. When you have money set aside for emergencies, you will instantly feel more comfortable with your financial state. Your car breaks down, not a problem. Your stove won't turn on, no worries. Having an emergency fund gives you peace of mind, and generally, the more you have set aside, the more relaxed you will be which is why I recommend you have a year's worth of living expenses on hand. But if you're starting out, three to six months is a good goal to work towards. Finally, we have investments. Talk to low income earners and you'll realize that very few of them invest. Obviously, you wouldn't expect them to be investing thousands of dollars a month, but most figure that if they can't invest large sums of money, then they may as well not invest at all. But that's a mistake. 
Investing is a habit like eating healthily or exercising, and the more you do, the easier it becomes. This is why, once you are rid of high interest debts and have ample emergency funds, you should be focusing on investing. This will allow you to learn the skill of investing, how to automate the process and see your finances progress over time, which will grant you more financial comfort in the future. However, there is some truth in that there are limits to your financial growth when investing with small sums of money, which leads us up to step number five. Step five, escape your low income. Do you remember when you used to get lost in a cave in Pokemon and would use an escape rope to get out? Well, your escape rope to your financial problems is to increase your income, so let's talk more about that now. Just about everyone wants to make more money. However, they face one of two obstacles in doing so. The first is that they are lazy, and given that I don't think you're this type of person, let's just move right on to the second type of person who struggles to make more money. The second type of person is someone who lacks guidance in how to make more money, and this resonates with a lot of people, as this isn't something we're taught at school. As such, when we start our careers, we don't make the income to afford us the lifestyle we deserve. To fix this, we need to understand what it means to provide value. The key to making more money is to provide more value, and you can do this in a few ways. If you presently have a job, ask yourself how you can provide more benefit to the company. It could be getting more training, designations, or working more hours to increase overall output. Adding more value could also come in the form of getting a second job, having a side hustle, or starting a business. Unfortunately, we often see people making low incomes who think that if they wait long enough, they'll start making more money. This is like sitting at home, waiting for the love of your life to come and knock on your door. It's never going to happen. Therefore, without going into a laundry list of side hustle or business ideas, I want you to keep it simple. Ask yourself what skills or experience you have, who could benefit from it, and connect with these people, and once you do, you will naturally start to see your income rise, which you can then use to save up to $1,000, which I'll teach you how to do in the next video. So click on over and let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, please ensure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.